Hey guys, Last Day on Earth just released a new update and uh, it's got a lot of hidden changes. So let me go through them real quick and show you what they are. Okay, the first one is that Morris here will give you a nail gun. It is uh, pretty awesome, but it does run out of time. It's not like the normal guns with durability as you shoot it, like you can shoot it as much as you want, but it, it's running on a timer instead. When you enter the world map, you will see that the user interface changes with this button right here. When you first click on it, it's going to show you a new event, but later it's going to do something very different. The third change is that they added the abandoned convoy, which is different than the destroyed convoy. When you enter the abandoned convoy and search this guy's body, a bunch of other guys will show up and they will question you but then they'll ask you your name and they'll recognize you. The next change is they add a storyline. This storyline seems pretty intense and pretty amazing. The next thing you need to do is pick your multiplayer character's gender, which is the brother or sister of the single player version of your character. Once you click it, it will send you to a new location. This new location is an NPC town similar to the one in Frostborn, so a lot of these NPCs don't actually have a role yet. But the main things you need to know is that it has this inbox which it gives you notes, rewards, letters that communicate between your single player and multiplayer version of yourself, the administrator who gives you tasks, and if you complete those tasks then you get to stay in this nicer part of the crater, otherwise you get sent to the slums and you have to work your way back over here. Stockman Pete now gives you a lot of storage and if you join a clan, he'll give you even more storage that you can share with your clan. The Craftsman allows you to access all of these workbenches as if you had them. You work all of them here so you can add wood in the woodworking bench and then you can come back and it'll tell you what you have available. The driver will take you to harder locations. Do not recommend doing these at first because they're a lot harder. Rather, I recommend going down to the bottom of the map where you can access the world map, which has a lot of green, yellow, and red zones, similar to the original version, except these are multiplayer zones. One thing that's important to note about these zones is that sometimes they will move as you are going to them, which means that you have to travel again, which can be a big waste of energy, so be careful on that. They also made a ton of changes to the different things that you can craft. They added the scarf, shirt, pants, and foot wraps. Those look really good for the post-apocalypse world. Uh, they've got masks, vests, and greaves. These are a lot easier. You're going to use these, adding a few not that difficult stuff. You do need the sewing table, but other than that, it's pretty easy to get them. They made everything a lot cheaper. Then they added Scout's armor, which again is not it's not as bad as it used to be. They, it used to be so hard to do anything in Sector 7, and they have made it a lot easier to craft different things. They've made it feel like more like the original game, what we love about the original game, which is a really nice touch. You will notice when you click on the zones that you can use rations. They have added a bunch of new stuff to the shop, including rations of various different prices for you guys. Uh, they have added a savings pack, so you could buy the best stuff if you work for it. They have added um, an infected zone pack, which is kind of similar to how it was. They added the scouts pack, which is, you know, these are very typical of last day on earth. They've added experience, which I'm not exactly sure why you need experience for sector seven, but you can still buy it here. And then of course you can get coins. So they've redone the shop for sector seven. Pretty much everything in sector seven has been redone. Anytime that you are playing, let's say you're traveling somewhere, you can click on this little button to switch back and forth. Here, I'll show you. You can switch back and forth between characters. You will notice in the zones that it's very similar to old last day on earth. It feels like you're kind of playing the same game, except this is multiplayer. Sadly, there is no auto in this version of the game and there's no sneak attacks, which makes things quite a bit more expensive. Green zones are a lot more difficult in the multiplayer version than they are in the single player version. They've got a lot of fast spiders. I think that is because it is designed to play in multiplayer. The best way to farm these zones is to just kind of go around the outskirts and get what you can without killing things. If you get chased by an enemy, just run out of the zone and then go right back in. When you enter the zone, you will often end up in a very different part of the map. This is helpful because sometimes the best thing to do is just to farm around the outskirts of the map and that way you don't have to fight all of the enemies, which if you're playing single player, that is very helpful. 
Roaming zombies are super slow, so you can farm them out without ever even fighting them. But you do need to be careful of the fast biters. If you run far enough away from enemies, they will end up running back to their location so you don't have to fight them. Though sometimes it's good to fight zombies because they will give you rope. And rope is important for building a backpack and other types of clothing. By the way, the devs wanted me to mention that this video was recorded in alpha. And so some of the display things, a lot of the ways that, you know, the characters look or the UI may be different. And th there just may be things different that I'm calling a hidden change in this video that actually aren't uh, an actual change. They made the requirements to get into Sector 7 to be a level 150 in the other thing. The abandoned convoy event that I showed you earlier does not show up until you hit level 150. If you had already unlocked Sector 7, then you will have access to this regardless, but otherwise you have to wait until you hit level 150 before that abandoned convoy will appear. They made a really big change where they removed all of the chests from green zones, making the green zone really only a place to get resources. And then they kept yellow zones to where they have three chests, but then they changed it to where red zones now only have two chests. Also, when you come back home after visiting a zone, don't go straight back to that zone or it will likely disappear in you before you arrive and you'll have to travel again and use more energy. From my understanding, energy drinks are supposed to work in both worlds. So if you get an energy drink in one world and it's in your inbox, you should have access to it and can use it in the other world. They also added a new event that you can access through the driver called Crossroads. In this event, it's kind of like a scrapyard event where you can find cars and you can open them up. I do not recommend going to this zone alone because if you do a, and you try to open a car, a bunch of zombies will attack you. And if you leave the zone ever, then you come back home immediately, which means that you probably wasted that 45 energy. The miner and the devourer are both accessed through uh, the driver. They also require having a team around you to complete and they require quite a bit of energy. They also made a change where even though it's true that you can still have only three people in a team, you can now find up to 10 people in a resource zone. If you are waiting for your character to arrive at a location, you can switch over to your other character and play on that character for a while, and then you can switch back 15 minutes later when you've arrived. So it kind of means that we can travel twice as fast in the game because even when we are traveling in this game, we can then switch back over to multiplayer and play a little bit there. It's really well integrated. I think Kafir did an incredible job with this. All right, guys, those are all the hidden changes that I found. If you found anything I missed, make sure to put it in a comment and we'll bump that up so that others can see it. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.